Hello chess lovers, Soren here and in this video I want to share with you the most dramatic Armageddon game which I have ever seen. This Armageddon game was played in the quarter final at 2019 FIDE World Cup between Chinese chess grandmaster Yu Yang Yi and Russian chess grandmaster Nikita Vitsugov. All their previous games, both in classical, rapid and police time control, had ended up with an equal score and it was Armageddon which was going to decide who would play in the semi-final. For those who do not know, I have to tell you that in this Armageddon white was given 5 minutes, black 4, but for white this is a must-win game. And Yu Yang Yi, who had white pieces, opened up with e4. Vitsugov responded with French defense, e6, and a rare continuation by Yu Yang Yi, f4. This line was very popular in the mid-19th century and is called La Bourdonnais variation. This is not considered to be an ambitious line, black can easily equalize, but is used by players as a surprise weapon. Vitsugov played d5, e5, c5, black is setting up the standard French formation, knight f3, knight c6, c3, knight h6, the knight is hurrying on f5 squared, which is a very standard square for the kingside knight in French defense, knight f5, knight c2, and this white didn't bother himself to occupy the center with his deep on black himself played d4, bishop d3, knight h4, with this move black is offering the exchange of knights and at the same time this knight is attacking the pawn on g2, but this last threat was overlooked by Yu Yang Yi and he played bishop e4 which is losing, instead it was better simply to castle kingside, but in our game we have bishop e4 and Vitsukov simply munched the pawn on g2, king f2, after which he munched another pawn, knight takes f4. This is move 10 and already black has a totally winning position. I have to tell you guys that the players were simply blitzing out the moves, they were playing really very quickly and Yu Yang Yi simply overlooked that threat. d3, right now black knight is hanging, that's why. Vitsugov moved it back on g6, he takes d4, c takes d4, bishop g5, bishop e7. We have the exchange of bishops on e7, and knight takes d4, after which Yu Yang Yi captured on e5, and we have the exchange of first pair of knights on e5, queen h5, and knight d7. A passive move, and not the strongest continuation. A move which could allow to win on the spot was queen c5. How are you going to protect this knight? You can't even play king e3 because of this knight c4 check and you are losing your queen. And actually after queen c5, white is also going to lose a piece and finally could already resign. But instead we have this passive looking knight d7 move, but still black is maintaining advantage rook g1. And also don't forget that even draw is great for black. Knight f6, well... Announcing a check from f6 with the queen and then playing e5 is of course more active. In this case, black is managing to create some problems for white, but in our game we have knight f6, queen e5, knight takes e4, d takes e4, f6, white managed to create some weaknesses in black's camp and now white queen is starting to announce some checks, queen f7, queen c5 and queen e7. Another passive move. Well, playing bishop d7 is better, if knight b5 then black can go for the exchange of the last minor piece and then play queen d7. In the end of the day, in the rook endgame, the players have equal chances and Vitsugov could easily draw this rook endgame, but instead he played queen e7, which is allowing white to gain advantage and already Black is facing some problems, here we have rook g1, e5, knight b5, and a6, a move after which black is losing, well still, even at this point, black could fight back by playing rook b8, if knight c7, then b5. The idea is to switch the rook into the game as soon as possible, if knight d5, then rook b7, but instead we have a6, and white will now give black no time to consolidate his position. Knight f6, f takes e4, rook c7, now the second rook wants to penetrate the 7th rank, rook g7 with a direct mating threat. That's why all black could do was to cover the f7 square, and we have rook d7, b5, 
h4, the threat is h5, that's why black himself played h5, rook g7, and now this bishop is no longer protected, and already it's difficult to find a safe square for this bishop. If you play a move like bishop e8, then white has this beautiful rook g8 check followed by knight h7 checkmate. In our game, rook c8 was played, but anyways, this tapped into rook g8 check. Rook takes g8, rook takes c8, and it's over, guys. White has an extra rook. Here, we took off, made a few more moves, and then uh, finally, after rook takes a6, he resigned. He resigned, and I have to tell you that for a long time, Vitukov was unable to leave his chair. He was sitting in the playing hall alone, thinking, trying to figure out what had gone wrong, but already this game was a history. A history and a very painful moment in Vitukov's career. Yes, guys, after playing so well in the opening, just making use of opponent's blunders. Already at move 10, Vitugov had a completely winning position, but blew it away and even managed to lose the game. What a turnaround. Well, thanks for watching, dear chess lovers. Waiting for your comments. How will you describe this situation? It will be interesting to read your comments as well. I will see you in my next video. Take care.